Hello friends and welcome back to the Unfortunate Archives. So according to my Goodreads, I have 78 favorite books. I mean, not just five star reads, books that I've added to a shelf dedicated to my favorite books of all time. And from seeing other people's Goodreads accounts, it's meant to be like 10 maximum. So I thought today in an age old YouTube tradition, we can pit these books against each other and see what's my actual favorite book, you know? I added all the books to the site and it made a random tournament, but it only works with certain sets of numbers. So I either had to cut down some of the books or I had to do what I did, which was to let it add some books more than once. I, I didn't want to remove any. <laughs> so let's go. Three, two, one. I love Yellowface, but RF Kuang has multiple books on this list, and Strange Beasts of China is severely underrated and is so strange and lyrical, so we're gonna go with that one. Two childhood favorites. I was obsessed with David Gemmell. Inkheart, I think, changed me as a person. That was where my love of metafiction and probably morally grey characters started. It's such a good childhood series. We have to go with Inkheart. Ghost King isn't even my favorite David Gemmell book. Sandman by Neil Gaiman, but not the graphic novels, the audiobook, which is the best audiobook of all time, versus Lirael. <laughs> Liriel was the first magical librarian, cool girl type of fiction that I ever read. This whole series is incredible. I'm sorry, Sandman. Nostalgia wins this one. And to be fair, it's not even nostalgia. I still reread this book every couple of years to this age. Liriel it is. It's okay. We're okay. So the Poppy Bar trilogy by RF Kuang versus A Little Life. Uh... It's not fair, it's a series against a standalone, it's fantasy against literary, and it's heartbreaking versus heartbreaking. Okay, I I'm gonna cheat with this one because this is too hard for the first round and we don't want to be here forever. So I looked and A Little Life is here twice, so I'm gonna go with the puppy bar. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Rin is, she is everything, I um, have to go with, oh, but a no, no, it's okay, A Little Life is gonna have another chance. We're gonna go with Rin in the poppy bar. Legion is a novella by Brandon Sanderson and I have multiple of his novellas on here because he's so good at writing them for such a short format, they really pack a punch. But Aristotle and Dante is absolutely incredible. It genuinely is one of the most immersive, beautiful, touching books I've read. It has to go with Aristotle and Dante. So good. So, A Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I haven't read this in years and I remember being super drawn in by how imaginative the world building was. That being said, I feel like if I read it now, after having read a lot of really amazing books with really imaginative writing, I don't think uh, it would be among my favorites. Princess Floralinda, even though it's a novella, it has a lot of emotional impact. And I will always pick the angry, bloodthirsty women. Another novella by Brandon Sanderson. I remember really loving the premise behind this one because it's a mix of sci-fi and fantasy, which I thought was super cool. I remember loving this book, The Amulet, when I was in middle school. I was super blown away by it. That being said, it doesn't have that strong of a nostalgic factor. But Perfect State, now looking back, I'm like, was it really that mind-blowing? You know what? I'm gonna go with The Amulet, because for a book that I read, what, like, 14 years ago or something, I remember quite a lot about it, so I feel like that says something. So another David Gemmell, I, I told you. Let's not get into it, but... I am not proud of this era of my life, let's, uh, let's just say that. Um, David Gemmell, but I do still love his books though. So like, not really, oh, I don't know. Okay, 100 person has to be coming later. This is one of the most underrated books ever. I've never heard anyone talk about this. I think it has like less than 500 reviews on Goodreads, but it's so good. It's super powerful, really emotional, such beautiful writing, becoming later. I don't remember anything about Ella Enchanted. The only things I remember actually from the movie, 
But I do remember that after reading this book, I went on a rampage and read a bunch of books by this author, but this was the only one that I really liked. Yolk was actually very similar because I read Yolk and then I read everything that she'd written. It has to go to Yolk. It also has one of the most gorgeous covers. If you ever see it in a bookstore, say hi and have a look. It's so beautiful. Genuinely, an hour before filming this, I was like, oh, what would be some of the worst combos I can get? And this was one of them. So In Memoriam, I read quite recently. I think this is my most recent favorite book. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I've already done this in my last video. I'm obsessed with this book at the moment. Like, I think about these characters every few hours at least. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow I read last year. It was probably my favorite book of last year. Oh, they're both so good. Both are heartbreaking. Both of these books made me cry. They both have amazing characters, great writing, very different books. In Memoriam is about two boarding school guys going to war and they're in love with each other. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is about the super complicated relationship between two video game designers and it follows them across the years. I have to go with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow because I don't really know why because oh, okay I think because even though it's been a year it's still as impactful as it was the day I finished it in memoriam is more recent so I don't I don't know if it, it'll have the same impact I'm sorry I would still consider sacrificing my own happiness for the happiness of the characters in in memoriam but I'm sorry has to go to tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow I told you before that that wasn't my favorite David Gemmell book. This was my favorite David Gemmell book. This was the first book that I reread many, many times and sobbed every time. It's about this group of thieves and misfits and just generally not great people who have to come together and revive this ancient order of really honorable warriors. Looking back, it was probably my first taste of the found family tropes and outsiders coming together type of story that I still love. I have such good memories of reading this book. This was a time when I figured out that if a book makes me ugly cry, it's gonna be one of my favorites. I actually reread re it two years ago. I think I still cried, but it didn't have quite the same punch. And I removed my rating because it was five stars. And then I removed it because the female characters, generally David Gemmell's female characters are so bad. And at the time that I was reading them, I thought you just had to take it. Like that's just what fantasy was. Now, thankfully, I know that's not the case. So. I removed the rating because I knew it wasn't five stars, but it had such an impact on me that I couldn't bear to give it anything less. So I just was like, no rating for this book. <laughs> and then we have the 100,000 Kingdoms, which again, no one really talks about. And I understand because N.K. Jemisin's other series is one of the best fantasy series ever written. I think that's largely agreed upon and we'll get to it. But this is still a really, really good fantasy series. You can see what kind of writer she was even then. But I, I, I don't agree with everything in this book, but I, it's probably one of the books that shaped me the most as a reader, so I have to go with Knights of Dark Renown. Oh no, okay. In the Dream House is about domestic abuse in a lesbian relationship, and it's one of the best, most impactful pieces of experimental writing I've ever read. I remember it being super inspiring to me in terms of what I like to write. And I still think about this book when I'm thinking about just really good writing in general. The Female of the Species was another one of those books that I finished reading and I was curled up and sobbing and I was in physical pain after I finished it. And I remember it had really vivid, beautiful characters. That being said, I have to give it to In the Dream House because there is no other book like it out there. <laughs> so both of these books are among the third category of books on this list, which are books that I remember really loving when I read them, but they've left zero long-term impact. I barely remember anything about either of these books, but I'm gonna go with 
witch mark I think just because I remember this super intense black scene that at the time I thought was the coolest thing ever even though I don't even ride bikes so I'm gonna go with witch mark because of that I 100% have to go with Andai Darken because even though Robin Hobb is one of my favorite authors she has another much better series Andai Darken is kind of like the Poppy Bar trilogy with the same vicious female characters rising to power, enemies to friends to lovers to enemies even though they have vastly different settings if you love the Poppy Bar trilogy you definitely should read this series and I'm gonna pick this series Oddest pairing we got yet Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones and you know the um I, do I even need to be careful of spoilers with Game of Thrones? I don't think so, but I'm still gonna speak in riddles. But the first major death that happens in a Game of Thrones, essentially the person who we thought was going to be a super important character in the series gets executed. And I remember reading this scene, this was way before the TV show came out, you know, because I'm one of those people, I read the books first. I remember reading it and being like, I must have read wrong. I genuinely was like, maybe I've just forgotten the name of a character. Like, this couldn't have happened. There's no way. <laughs> I was so shocked. One of those reading moments that I'll never forget. The amount of shock and horror I felt was just amazing. And obviously there's so much else that's really great in this series, even without an ending. And then we have Percy Jackson, sassy, mythology based, the diverse characters later on. I was so obsessed with this series and to this day I still read the continuation and I think a lot of us who grew up with this series do as well. But I, I have to go with Game of Thrones. Oh, sorry Percy. Never ever has Neil Gaiman's whimsy. Also, if you have this particular version, the illustrations are so, so beautiful. I have it somewhere like on display. I don't, oh, I don't think you can see it with this, with this frame. Blackwater Sister takes place in Malaysia from what I remember and I do remember really loving the setting and the overall story felt very different to most of the fantasy books out there. That being said, I think I have to give it to Neverwhere. I think I like it slightly more. Oh no! The Witch's Heart is a mythology retelling based on Loki's wife, Sigyn. It was one of my favorite books the year I read it. I do still think about this book from time to time. The Cruel Prince is the best of YA fantasy. Uh, that's pretty widely agreed upon. Jude, the main character, is psychotic and it has one of the best romances ever. They're both so awful to each other that it just works. I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm kind of leaning towards the witch's heart. I don't really have a justification, but I love the cool prince. I love, love, love. Oh, okay. That's kind of sad. Mistborn actually is my favorite Brandon Sanderson series. I, I love Stormlight, but Mistborn has one of the best magic systems ever written and it has such a good premise. It essentially takes place in a world after the hero who was meant to save everyone failed and now the entire world is suffering because of that and I don't want to go into it otherwise we'll be here forever but it's really really good the plot is amazing it has such great twists and turns and the characters are pretty good as well even though i don't feel like characters are generally brandon sanderson's strongest point spinning silver is an amazing standalone and it's so imaginative so whimsical the main character Miriam is so intelligent and ambitious and ruthless I love her this one has an amazing world building and magic system but I do care a bit more about characters and spinning silver has the better characters so we're gonna go with spinning silver but this this one does hurt a Space Between Wars was one of those books that I absolutely loved when I read it. I thought it was the most original thing. It had this group of sex workers that were super important political powers, so that was super cool. That being said, the name of the wind, even though I'm as mad as anyone that we're not gonna... I mean, we might, we might, but I'm as mad as anyone that we haven't gotten an ending to this series. 
And I do hate the way that the female characters are portrayed in this series, but the writing and the plot and even the the male characters are really good. So I, I have to go with the name of the wind, especially the first one. The second one is a bit like dude has a lot of magical sex and it's less interesting, but the first one is so good. When the Tiger Came Down the Mountains is a part of a novella series and I remember being blown away by them, but I haven't reread them. Emergency Contact was a part of my rampage after reading Yolk. It's by the same author and I was so obsessed. I remember finishing this book and being like, I want to go back and start reading it from the beginning again. I do know this isn't that popular like I think the rating on Goodreads isn't that high but for some reason for me it was just like catnip I, I don't know what to tell you like it was just something about the main couple in this book that really appealed to me and the writing and generally it's just super good I love Cinder when I read it as a teenager it's like this cyberpunk retelling of fairy tales so like Cinder lies a cyborg and instead of leaving her shoes on the palace stairs she leaves her like, cyborg leg so it's super cool very imaginative but uprooted is one of my favorite books of all time also kind of fairy tale folklore inspired but it's just something else it's on another level both are series one of them i finished the other one a winter's promise i've only read two of the four i will finish it i did really like it um i don't know both are, both are really good series. An Illusion of Thieves is super underrated. It kind of has Six of Crows vibes, like a group of misfits doing criminal things. A Winter's Promise is more of that old style fantasy with really good board building. I'm going to go with actually An Illusion of Thieves. The Midnight Bargain is like a fantasy about abortion, right? So it's so good. It does have an Insta romance, but I didn't mind. These Violent Delights is like be gay do crime dark academia is so good as well great characters super twisted i'm actually gonna go with the midnight bargain this book has a very low rating on goodreads for what it is i really like it i thought like fantasy about abortion rights is the best okay oh all right so ariadne is a mythological retelling of Ariadne. It probably would have won against a lot of other books, but The Invisible Life of Adi Leroux is perfect. To me, it's the perfect book. If you really are looking for a plot-driven book, you're gonna hate this. If you're in it for the vibes, it's immaculate. Oh, yeah. I love Lonely Castle in the Mirror, but The Night Circus is... The, the, it's... It's just not like it, I. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the day when I can read another book that is even remotely as immersive and imaginative and incredibly transportive <laughs> as the Night Circus. It's just an, it's something else. There's nothing else like it. The Goblin Emperor, I've only read the first one because for years it was meant to be a standalone. Encyclopedia of Fairies, uh, the second book came out this year and was still very good. I love the character dynamics in this one. Very strong house moving castle vibes. Grumpy, smart female main character. The Goblin Emperor is like cozy fantasy before cozy fantasy was really a tag. So um, both are really good. Both, I don't think, would be among my favorites if I read them now. Encyclopedia of Fairies, I absolutely love, but I think it's among my favorites because I read it at the time when I was really sad and it made me really happy. So that's why I added it, I think. Would be a five star, but not, not a favorite. The Goblin Emperor, I think it's here because it was the first real cozy fantasy that I read. It might just be recency bias, but I'm gonna go with Encyclopedia. The Traitor Baru Cormorant is one of those colonial pain books that is about a super intelligent kind of ruthless main character whose country was colonized and now she's joined the empire to try to take them down from within essentially. It's really good. 
that being said, Northern Lights was actually my childhood. There were only a few series I was obsessed with to the same amount as I was with this series, and I do think it stands the test of time. I'm less scared to reread this compared to most other childhood favorites. I don't think it'll lose much with the years. I have to go with that. Nostalgia wins. <laughs> Oh, this is actually such a good pairing. Both are such weird books. Fully different genres. Several people are typing, is this like really strange corporate novel that takes place only in Slack? And it follows this group of co-workers just solely based on their online communication. It's really great. I don't want to give much away, but it's so weird. It's so funny. I really liked it. The library at Mount Char is Bizarre Fantasy. Also really good, super original. I think I have to give it to the library at Mount Char, but several people are typing, it's so funny. Two Fantasy Standalones, another David Gemmell, probably my second favorite David Gemmell. Echoes of the Great Song, also will make you cry if you're a, you know, a 12 year old girl. Descendant of the Crane, Standalone fantasy got discontinued by the publisher. I will never understand why. I, I'm gonna give it to the Sandal of the Crane. It has such great politics. That's my reason. <sighs> okay. Manicult, a Harry Potter fan fiction versus Babel. Manicult is amazing, and I'm so glad to hear that the author is adapting it for publication. You know, like obviously changing the characters and world building and stuff. Babel uh, is like, you know, it's Babel. Empress of Sultan Fortune is a novella in the same novella series we saw earlier. Girls Made of Snow and Glass is like a, I think it's a Snow White retelling where it's focused on the relationship between Snow White and the stepmother and both are really complex morally gray characters in a sort of one being the villain and one being the victim. So I really like it. That being said, The Empress of Salt and Fortune is probably the best, one of the best novellas out there. <laughs> yeah, not a competition. I don't understand why Carol is in this list. I think the only reason it's here is because of how desperate I was to find a book that even remotely resembled The Night Circus, but it's not it. And Daughter of the Moon Goddess is incredible. I'm mad about some of the stuff in the second book, but generally it's such an amazing duology. Love it. So, such a weird pair. In cards, fantasy series, kind of for children. Probably can read as adults. I'm guessing if I reread this, it's gonna be fine. Strange Beasts of China is this magical realism um, short story ish collection about China. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with Strange Beasts of China because, as much as I loved Inkart as a child, um, I had other series that I liked more. <laughs> I know it's not, it's not the best reasoning, but I don't know what to give you. Oh. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So you're not sad. really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Okay. So, the this is fine. It's Nothing's gonna happen as a result of this. It's okay. So, Lirael and the entire Old Kingdom series was, in fact, among the top three reading experiences of my young self. And the Poppy War is probably among the best experiences of my adult self. I mean, reading experiences. As if there is a difference. I don't know. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the Poppy War, but this hurts me deeply. And I think I'll go with it because it is written for adults, so I think the themes are a bit deeper and more relevant to my life as an adult. That being said, if Lirael didn't exist, maybe I wouldn't have grown up to be the kind of person who could read the Puppy War and appreciate it. So maybe I'm just being incredibly ungrateful. But I'm still gonna go with the Puppy War. I'm sorry, Lirael. Easy. All right, so Princess Florinda is an amazing novella, but there's no way it can stand against Aristotle and Dante.
everyone should read Aristotle and Dante. Like generally, this is one of the books I think like any anyone can read and enjoy. Easy, becoming later. I don't remember that much about the other one. A hundred percent more on tomorrow, tomorrow. Love York, but it's not a competition. Easy. Okay, so a book that really impacted me as a child. A book that really impacted me as an adult. Like, don't get me wrong, In the Dream House is a better book, 100%, using probably any metric. But this isn't about, you know, the best book. This is about my favorite. Like, I've read Knights of Dark Renown at least six times. I read it, like, four times when I was in high school. In the Dream House represents the kind of writer I would want to be, I think, to an extent. I have to go with Knights of Dark Renown. While understanding that it's definitely not the better book. And I darken. 100%. Game of Thrones. Oh, this is so tough. They're kind of similar ish books The Witch's Heart, Mythological, Spinning Silver, Fairy Tale inspired. Both great characters, female led books. Spinning Silver is more whimsical, The Witch's Heart is a bit more dark and upsetting. I think I'm gonna go with The Witch's Heart, probably only because it's darker. But at any moment, which one would I prefer to read? No, I'm. Ah! Okay, this is fine. I'm supposed to be cool. I'm cool. I understand that this, in the grand scheme of things, this choice does not matter. <clears throat> okay. I'm, I'm gonna go with the bitch's heart. I, I think, I think I'm gonna go with the name of the wins. Fantasy usually wins out for me. Yeah, 100% I'll put it. Oh, love the Midnight Bargain. I think it's super smart. We're gonna go with the Invisible Life of a Video. As my heart. Yeah. Night Circus. No doubt. It has to be his Dark Materials. Uh, I do think this was probably one of my other extremely formative series that I read. <laughs> yeah, Fable. Please. These are equally good. So, Daughter of the Moon Goddess wins probably only because, you know, it's a duology compared to a novella, so it just has more time. Yeah, has to be the puppy book. Oh, yeah, as much as I like Becoming Leda, I settle on Dante. Yeah, this is the moment. Knights of Dark Renown, you know, Childhood impact can only go so far. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is amazing. Oh, okay. I actually don't feel bad about that. It probably shouldn't have made it that far. Ooh. And I darken three books. If you put them all together, it's probably only going to be like the size of one book in a Game of Thrones. A Game of Thrones, obviously, massive series unfinished, intricate characters, amazing twists, great board building. It does drag a little bit. If you read the whole series, a few of the books are just like, you didn't need to be this long, you know? You know that it was that long because at that point, no editor was going to tell George R.R. R. Martin to make it shorter. So we're going to go with anti Darken actually. And also, you know, it's finished. So that stands for something. Yeah. The Witch's Hearts, I'm mad at Patrick Rutfuss's female characters. I don't want it to go that far, and The Witch's Heart is really good. We're gonna go with that. Oh, no. oh. Okay, I think I know the answer, but it's probably the most hurtful so far. Uprooted for years was my favorite book of all time. Like, this was the book that I thought of if I had to choose one. It was uprooted, but Invisible Life of Adi LaRue is perfection. Oh, it's actually so sad. Why does it matter so much? Okay, yeah. Oh, it, it, this one hurts a little bit too. And Lyra, you were my childhood, but the Night Circus is the Night Circus, you know. Daughter of the Moon God, that's amazing, but Babel is something else. Oh, 
Ooh. Okay. Oh, I think I think I'm gonna go with the puppy bar. This one might be either a genre preference, just because it's fantasy versus not fantasy, <laughs> like real world, or it might be a bit of recency bias because I recently read the last book in the Poppy Bar series or it might be just that the Poppy Bar series is way more dark and that calls to me but I'm gonna go okay yeah and I darken is amazing but tomorrow 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 is something else okay invisible lock already low that feels okay that doesn't feel too bad oh no at any given moment, I would choose to reread The Night Circus. I don't think there is any time that I'm not in the mood to reread this book. But Babel gave me words for my experiences, and I think that's super important. So we're gonna go with Babel. Okay. Oh, oh my god, it's just gonna get worse and worse. I, like, I should have realized this earlier. I feel like it's not exactly mind-blowing, but it's very upsetting. I think I'm gonna go with tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. There's really nothing that I can fault with the Poppy Bar trilogy, but tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is holds a special place in my heart. And this might also be because I started reading the Poppy Bar at a good time in my life. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow I read in one of the worst years of my life. And the fact that it meant so much to me in that year, it's giving it an edge. We're gonna go with that. Okay, this is not fun anymore. Both of these are books that I've only read once. I've been wanting to reread The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue, but I think there is like a tiny part of me that's scared that it won't be the same. I don't know why I love this book so much. Like I said before, Babel means a lot to me, but for some reason when I think about perfection, I think about The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. There's just something about this book Oh, that was super articulate, sorry. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow has the better characters, better plots. The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue has better vibes and better writing, I think. And usually characters are my top preference. But in this case, I still loved Addy. And I still loved... Actually, all the three main characters in the Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. So I'm gonna go with that. Ah, oh, okay. Oh! Alright. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to where it's easy again. That's good. We're on the other side. Yay! Okay, Golem and the Genie. Duology was a standalone for many years. Super fun. It's about immigrants. It's like a mix of different Middle Eastern mythologies in New York. But Never Let Me Go touched my heart. It wasn't a sobbing kind of reading experience, but I was super emotional when I read it. I'm gonna go with Never Let Me Go. Oh, this was supposed to be easy! Oh, okay. Six of Crows is the best YA fantasy series ever written, I stand by that. I think it beats out The Cool Prince by just a little bit. Obviously widely beloved, incredible character dynamics, really great plot. But the fifth season is genuinely, I think, the best fantasy series ever written. Incredible world building. The first book has one of the best narrative tricks I've ever read. Great characters, super dark and twisted. It's about racism, it's about what we've done to the environment. Yeah. Cares and Inej, I'm sorry. You have to go with the fifth season. Oh, okay. If you were villains, another BJ do crime kind of. Dark Academia, but The Paper Menagerie was another book that was my favorite book of all time for years. It's the best short story collection I've ever read. Genre bending, extremely intelligent, very emotional, love can you, definitely The Paper Menagerie. City of Brass, I do remember really liking it when I read it. Never finished the series. Robin Hobb's Ship of Magic, I think, is her best work. There are these massive fantasy tomes, multiple pubs, great world building, really good characters, 
the ending is a little bit disappointing, but the whole reading experience is worth it. This is the best of kind of traditional fantasy, I think. We're going to go with Ship Atlantic. Bottle of Goods is this magical realism novel that's almost like a series of interconnected short stories that's about communism, essentially. This a, spin, a spindle splintered. God, that's hard to say. It's like a Spider-Verse version of Sleeping Beauty. It's super fun. But I think Bottle Goods means more to me. I filmed for so long that the memory card was full. So we took a little break. And also the sunset. It's good. I think I needed the break. It was too emotionally draining. So what I did was I went and I quickly did all the ones that are repeated because no one wants to hear me talk for that long. So the idea was that I would get rid of all the books that I added twice with the exception of A Little Life, which was my little cheating moment. However, that did have this little unintended consequence. Little Life versus Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. This isn't meant to be a real choice because tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow had its chance on the other side. So I should choose a little life. So that it should actually be easy, but it just doesn't feel easy. <laughs> Thinking about this, I never should have allowed books to be here twice. I should have just deleted some of them. Okay. It's okay. So these two are actually kind of similar. They both follow a group of friends across many years and both books are really concerned with the dynamics of the relationships which are not contained to simple labels like friendship or romance. They both also have really, really sad moments and really happy moments. And they're both written really well, really beautifully. A Little Life is probably the most tragic book ever written, just in terms of the pure number of tragic things that it includes. I don't think any other book comes even close. But Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is also pretty sad. It's just that no book can compare to A Little Life when it comes to the sheer amount of tragedy. I'm gonna choose A Little Life because otherwise it's kind of meaningless. I've already chosen other books over Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow on the other side of the bracket war. So I'm gonna go with A Little Life, but to be honest, I think I like Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow a little bit better. I think. I think A Little Life I have some ethical issues with it and it's not enough for me to not enjoy the book and it's a really good book. I don't have that big of a moral compass, but Tomorrow and Tomorrow Tomorrow is arguably just as good and I find it not problematic. <laughs> so I think that gives it a little edge. That being said, I'm gonna choose a little life here. We're gonna continue now. <laughs> right, fifth season, Never Let Me Go. Yeah, Never Let Me Go is absolutely amazing. Another book that I would recommend to a lot of people. Fifth season is the height of fantasy. Short story collection to the win. Like I said, one of my favorite books of all time. I mean, all of them are, but... Oh, yeah, it has to be Harry Potter. The Fifth Season versus The Paper Menagerie. Aww. Both of these, I think, represent the very, very best of fantasy as a genre. These are the books that I would recommend to people who are like, fantasy is for children, or whatever people think about fantasy. I, uh, oh, this is so tough. I don't know. How do you compare the very best of short stories with the very best of series? Ah, oh. okay, I think it has to be the fifth season. That being said though, The Paper Menagerie was the book that I would tell people as my favorite book of all time. The fifth season, I don't think ever reached that stage, but uh, I don't know. I have to go with the fifth season, but this pains me. Okay. Okay, so a seminal work in children's fantasy versus a seminal work in adult fantasy. Harry Potter has been a bit tainted by the actions of the author, but I'm gonna put that aside and just think about it as something that belongs to us as the readers. The fifth season has not in fact been tainted. I haven't heard N.K. Jemisin say anything transphobic, so that's good. <laughs> but anyway, that aside, um, 
I think I'm gonna go with the fifth season. I do think Harry Potter is probably the most impactful series of books, but I'm gonna go with the fifth season. Okay, <laughs> so that brings us to the fifth season versus The Little Life on this side. Okay, interesting. Both amazing books, highly influential in their genres, widely beloved by readers, obviously absolutely love both of them myself. The fifth season shines particularly, I think, in plot and world building. A Little Life shines in characters. I think I'm gonna choose A Little Life because of that, just because characters tend to be just a little more important to me. The fifth season still has great characters, but A Little Life is the characters. The end. Oh. A Little Life plays with your emotions like no other book and it's very aware that it's doing it. The author wrote it to contain the very extremes of human emotions. Though I would say the extremes on the low side are way more extreme. Once you finish the book and you look back, you're like, okay, those were some crazy things that happened. But as you're reading it, you're so invested, you're so immersed that you don't think about that really. You're just emotionally there with the characters. The Invisible Life of the Dealer Rue is harder for me to describe why it works. It's about this French girl who makes a deal with a god many many years ago so that she can live forever but in return no one remembers her so as soon as she leaves the room everyone forgets about her so she spent all these years trying to influence artists and writers and musicians so that even though they forget her traces of her remain in their art the invisible life of edie larue is just a book that i distinctly remember finishing and closing and just being like it was perfect and i wasn't crying and i wasn't like in pain like i was with a little life or tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow i wasn't thinking about my experiences and putting words to things that i couldn't before like babel it wasn't because i thought it defined the genre or did really new things like the fifth season or the paper menagerie it was just perfect that's how i felt so i think i'm gonna go with the invisible life of eddie larue this is crazy the invisible life of eddie larue is my favorite book of all time i think depending on what mood i'm in when i do something like this the top five books would probably be interchangeable but it would be something between The Invisible Life of a Dealer Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, Babel, The Night Circus, and A Little Life. If I had a few more options, I would also add The Paper Menagerie, Uprooted, and The Fifth Season. Oh, but there's so many. Okay, no, I should, I should stop looking. It would be between those five and the extra tree. <laughs> and if I could add more, I would add The Puppy War and Aristotle and Dante and maybe never let me go, but that's it. <laughs> Interestingly, The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue isn't a book that I would recommend to everyone. I think it does take a certain kind of reader to enjoy it. You really need to appreciate a slower pace and more atmospheric and vibey books. In comparison, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is a book that I recommend to everyone. I find it really hard to understand why people wouldn't like this. It's just an all around great book. It has great characters, writing, plot, and the emotional experience. So very different types of readers could read this and still enjoy it. A Little Life, I never recommend, unless I know someone really, really well. Definitely requires you to check the trigger warnings and your own emotional capacity. I 100% understand why some people don't like this book. I still love it. Babel, I also understand why some people might not want to read this because it's not the most approachable book. Absolutely life-changing for me. And The Night Circus is another book that I think many, many different kinds of readers enjoy. And it's very special because the plot and the characters aren't actually that good, to be honest. It's just that the setting is so absolutely incredible and so immersive that it just sets it aside from almost any other book out there. There you have it, friends. Always great talking to you about books. 
even when there is some emotional damage involved. I appreciate if you like and subscribe and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye! I didn't have any real breakdowns. It was kind of fun. I... Oh. 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 But oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's okay.